Hello, hi, this is Ganesh from Hyderabad School of Learning and uh, we are into PSN test of English uh, coaching and we offer both online and classroom training and our batches start every Monday and we have four different time slots wherein people can attend from any part of the world for online training and we have classroom training both of course online and classroom training we have uh, the batches starting every Monday. So for more details you can uh, contact us or you can write to us uh, training at hslacademy.com so this video is basically meant only for reorder question which is part of reading module of PSN test of English. So I would like to spend maybe around 30 minutes from now just to make people understand the concept, this concept and also maybe give, explain some examples of PSN standard. So uh, this of course particular exercise you would need to be part of our classroom training first. Maybe you can listen to this video as a second time maybe after post you were attendance in the class so that uh, you'll also understand our technique you know in detail and of course you are supposed to do many exercises before you hit the exam maybe as part of our training and also our exercises in the book right you'll be exposed to around 130 exercises sorry maybe around 150 exercises so uh, when you do all these questions you get a lot of maturity of course and you should never practice all these questions in one go you would better do all these questions uh, maybe in a span of around 10 to 15 days uh, time uh, or maybe sometimes three weeks or four weeks also because you more the more you do applying our technique of course uh, you also get a lot of maturity in this question so on the chances of getting definitely of course you will get partial that nothing can stop you from getting partial score in the other question in the exam but you can also think of getting full score and getting a full score within reorder is also important for people who are trying for 79 in all four modules because these days since the competition is very high particularly for people coming from the IT stream they would need to climb 20 points from this exam and this is the only uh, language test where in the across the globe now currently where people can definitely think of getting uh, 20 points from a language test maybe uh, which which may not be that easy uh, in other tests so certainly this is an exam that you people can definitely think because this is an online exam which is scored and when think of um, uh, doing in a certain way there are many chances of getting 20 points from this exam so let's see how this question goes in the exam and of course uh, in the exam you will see uh, maybe let me see let me show you how this question actually uh, appears on the yeah this is how it appears on the uh, screen on the day of the exam so on the left hand side you will see sentences reorder the paragraph uh, what does it mean so we are going to order maybe we are given either four sentences in the exam or we are given five sentences so we are supposed to and these five sentences are not in the right sequence and we are supposed to put them in the right sequence and of course we are supposed to drag from the left hand side towards the right side right hand side for example like this so if you feel that this sentence has to come as a first sentence you will drag it and then you will put put it on the right hand side so and then you will think of in you know, a sequencing one after the other so that's how we try to and of course uh, uh, maybe when you think let's say this has to come as a first sentence and then and then if you feel that this has to come as a second sentence and these two will make up what one pair in the exam if the pair is correct the, we get a point Paid has to be correct. Paid means what? Two sentences need to be together and they need to be in the right position also, not just maybe you will not get a point if they are supposed to be imagined. They are supposed to be in the first and second, but you have placed imagine on the day of the exam as second and third. So you will not get a point because you are missing the position. So the sentences need to be in the right sequence and also they need to match in terms of the position also. It's not just a sequence. Sequence has to match and the paid has to match and the position also has to match only then we get a partial score otherwise we would not get it so in this audio of course uh, i'm going to expo explain this concept of reorder paragraph all right so let's see how it goes so <clears throat> first when we are given five sentences first we would need to understand how to get uh, the uh, first sentence a sentence as a first out of five so we use a technical nerve N I R P. First, let me define what N I stands for. N I stands for not independent. So any sentence that you feel that is not independent cannot be considered a first sentence in a paragraph. And also R P stands for reference based. 
means what maybe within a sentence you might see a sentence which is not um, maybe the words in a sentence are not independent in such cases we will not consider such kind of uh, sentences wherein we have words which are dependent like for example this country is famous for unity and diversity so uh, maybe this country this is what a dependent word so that it means what so that's a reference ba based word which means that needs some reference otherwise that word cannot be independent hence that sentence cannot be independent so a sentence which has got independent uh, reference based words cannot be considered a first sentence in a paragraph so in order to do out of five sentences if you want to get a sentence as a first first what you need to do is you should believe in the concept of elimination first so you would need to eliminate four sentences so for the sake of getting the first sentence you need not worry about reading every sentence fully for the sake of getting the first sentence but of course once you get the first sentence you need to read every sentence fully uh, in order to understand whether any sentence has got some a hint indicators of course because uh, having a hint indicator is also important so now let's use so i have written like this start with what sentence cannot come first yeah. instead of looking for what can come first i would suggest you to look for what sentence cannot come first so many uh, maybe uh, what kind of sentences cannot come first maybe i have written here now you can read that meaning which is not independent such sentences cannot come first a sentence uh, maybe for example you have a sentence like war what the result is people started hating the policies of the government right so if you uh, read that sentence the result is people started hating the policies of the government that is a in, that's an independent sentence but meaning is what the result is so when a sentence starts with the result is it means what when you start a sentence with the result is something must have happened already right so though the sentence looks independent but we want the meaning also to be independent otherwise we do not consider such sentences uh, you know a first sentence so that's why meaning is not independent a sentence which is not independent cannot come as a sentence and some words need reference or explanation sometimes when a sentence so we are trying to first uh, you know understand how to eliminate a sentence we eliminate a sentence when its meaning is not independent and also when a sentence has got some words that need some reference or explanation some reference in such cases right we don't consider such sentences number one and then once you uh, eliminate four sentences out of five based on a technique called NIRB, not independent and reference based. And it's easy, of course, you know, to apply this. I will also show you via an example. So uh, once you decide what cannot come, then we will worry about what what sentence can come first, right? So the leftover of uh, post elimination, the leftover sentence can uh, come as a first one. So a sentence which is very much independent in its meaning, right? It does not have any reference indicators and the meaning is super independent and usually the first sentence in a paragraph because whenever uh, if you go by the mechanics of writing a paragraph whenever an author writes a paragraph you would like to introduce maybe a person maybe you would like to introduce a place in that paragraph maybe you would like to introduce a thing in that paragraph that thing could be an idea or a concept so usually when an author writes a paragraph he would like to introduce a person a place or a thing Thing could be as i said an idea or concept so the first sentence once you decide what can come first post your elimination so that comes on the right hand side top so once you get the first sentence i would suggest you to read the sentence every time that you get a sentence on the right hand side from the left so you would better read the sentence for meaning read the sentence for its tone read the sentence for how it ends with right so let me repeat this once you get the sentence first sentence on the right hand side top you read the first sentence fully for its meaning, fully for its tone, and read the first sentence, first sentence uh, to understand how it ends with. So this is very important, of course. So once you get the first sentence, next is what you need to understand. See, on the top now we have the first sentence. First sentence needs to be independent as a mandate, rather. So the first sentence in a paragraph cannot be, in any case, dependent, either in, it, in terms of meaning of the sentence or maybe in terms of any word, uh, within that sentence so the sentence uh, as uh, the first sentence has to be independent both in terms of meaning and also uh, without any word being dependent so now let's understand how once you get the first sentence uh, which is called independent sentence as i said right the first sentence has to be independent and it introduces a person place or a thing right so once you get the first sentence the challenge is how we can actually sequence the next sentences 
write as a second, third, fourth, and fifth. So the next sentences can be second, third, fourth, fifth, all right, based on purely the relationship. So we need to understand, here I wrote here, right, you can see relationship clues. So you need to understand which sentence has got a clue right indicating uh, maybe a relationship with the previous sentence so the relationship can be understood via time indicator so you need to check as i said once you get the first sentence then you need to read uh, sorry you need to read every sentence fully to understand whether any sentence has got any kind of an indicator right so these indicators generally indicate what relationship with the previous sentence so the relationship right among the rest of the four sentences I need to be understood of course so which sentence out of four uh, shares a relationship with the first sentence that is what actually you need to uh, understand which sentence has got a relationship with the first sentence but how do i know maybe as a reader of a paragraph which uh, sentence has got a relationship with the first sentence you might want to so uh, maybe whether this sentence has got a relation with the previous sentence whether this sentence has got a relation with the first sentence so uh, you need to understand that uh, link or relationship only via relationship clues so that is why we use a technique called rose bit or rose kit so this technique actually helps us to understand whether which sentence has got a link with the previous sentence link in this is what relationship without understanding or without having any uh, maybe uh, relationship right between two sentences we cannot sequence them as one and two for example ganesh rinki is a trainer is a sentence and hyderabad has many shopping malls and hyderabad city has many shopping malls do you see any relationship between two sentences we do not see so it means we cannot plug those two sentences as one and two because those two sentences do not share any relationship between them so in order to sequence sentences one after the other right so we need to understand which sentence has got a proper link of course with the previous sentence only then we would try to sequence the sentences one after the other otherwise we do not even think of you know sequencing sentences one after the other all right so uh, basically maybe um uh, let's see so uh, maybe a sentence which has got some time indicators can indicate relationship with the previous sentence that is our so rose bit or rose gate technique is basically to understand which sentence has got some in time indicators maybe to indicate what relationship with the previous sentence or which sentence has got some reference indicators to indicate relationship with the previous sentence or maybe which sentence has got a link with the previous sentence right maybe that hint can be understood via opposition also right so a sentence which has got opposite um, maybe uh, indicators can also share relationship with the previous sentence and also we can understand the relationship between two sentences uh, via specific indicators so all this i will make you understand so usually the first sentence is very very broad i will I, I explain all this now let's let take a look at this now eric has been with google since 2005 this is a purely what an independent sentence and maybe a next sentence how does it uh, establish a link with the previous sentence so linking can be understood via time also for example he has been extending his services in testing stream since then so since then is what a time indicator indicating what a uh, uh, relation with the previous sentence. since then then refers to what 2005 so a sentence can have some indicator via time also via reference like he which can indicate what relation with the previous sentence so once you understand that the a sentence has got some uh, link or maybe some relation with the previous sentence maybe in the form of time indication so the link can be understood so once a link is established between two sentences you can think of you know uh, plugging them as one and two so you always need to understand a uh, clue which sentence has got a better clue with the previous sentence to explain or maybe to understand whether that sentence has got a link with the previous sentence or not for example you can also see uh, you can also understand linking via reference Australians won many international beauty pageants. So the next sentence, right? The sentence can come as a second. Look at that now. These contests encouraged many women for more participation. So if you look at these contests, refer to what? Beauty pageants. So so this is these pageants or contests is called what reference indicator. So these is a reference indicator. These contests refer to what? Beauty pageants. So these contests as a reference indicator, referring to some of the words in the previous sentence and that's how it shows relationship with the previous sentence and that's how we try to plug them as one and two sentences our next is maybe you can also look at this so linking also can be understood via opposition for example indian government mandated electoral enrollment for all its citizens 
but it has not it hasn't been a big success in this initiative so uh, this what maybe you can look at the meaning is what looks like you know the uh, meaning between the, these two sentences looks like what opposite opposite so though the meaning between two sentences opposite we can still uh, see what link between two sentences so that's how a relationship can be understood and also if you look at this linking via specifics for example many languages are spoken across india Hindi is widely spoken in this country. Many languages are spoken across India. As I said, the first sentence is what? An independent sentence. And it can introduce a person or a place or a thing, an idea or a concept, right? So usually the first sentence is very broad, comprehensive. And the second sentence or a sentence can come as a second when it actually gives you what specific information about the first sentence, which is very, very broad, for example. Maybe... There are many shopping malls in Hyderabad city, uh, Telangana state. So, uh, two malls are known for, uh, are very, uh, very reputed. So, you are giving what specific information about what? Hyderabad, which has got many uh, malls. So, first sentence is usually what? Or maybe you can take Ganesh Ringi is a trainer. It's a broad statement or a comprehensive statement. He is into language courses. So you are giving specific details about the broad sentence that comes on the top. And uh, a PSN test of English is uh, the course that he is, uh, is the language test that he is currently specialized in. So you are giving what? So the third sentence can give what? Can give, uh, can give um, further specific details about the first two also. So you need to understand which sentence is a broad one, which sentence is what giving specific details. And a sentence which is giving specific details about the broad sentence which is on the top can also be thought of as a second sentence in a paragraph for example now you look at this now linking via reason also as per a study majority of people migrated to cities across the globe availability of various facilities could be cited a primary reason for this movement so here maybe if you look at this one uh, there are two indicators actually this movement refers to what migration and uh, this sentence also gives you a reason for this so a sentence can be um, thought of as a second sentence when it gives you reasons or when it explains or when it is what referring to the previous sentence. So ultimately what, what are we trying to understand now? We are trying to understand which sentence can actually uh, give us what? Uh, relationship with the previous sentence. Now let us read this now. So you read this uh, paragraph and you need to understand quickly of course as I said for the sake of getting the first sentence you need not actually read every sentence uh, fully. You need not read every sentence fully. So, first you need to understand what sentence cannot come first because we've like to use a technical NIRB. And I stands for not independent. So when you start reading a sentence, you need to quickly understand whether there is any indicator, uh, maybe a reference indicator or dependency indicator, which can help you understand whether it can come as a first or not. For example, if you look at the second sentence, additionally, it covers. So it covers, do you see any, uh, maybe it is acting as a what dependent word. So such kind of sentences where we have a dependent word cannot be thought of as second, first sentence in a paragraph. So let us take it out. So if you look at the first sen sentence also, regarding transportation, for instance, the challenge is not to understand general day-to-day -day personal needs. So if you look at the meaning of that sentence, it doesn't give you an independent meaning. So let us treat, let us not treat that as a first one. But fourth cannot come because we don't start a paragraph with the but. So in all likelihood, the first sentence has to be either third or fifth. Uh, whenever you get, whenever there is a close contest between two sentences, because both these sentences look like what? independent sentence then what do you do look at which sentence is what broader com more comprehensive and which is what giving you specific details about the broad one so that you can eliminate so read the third and fifth now read it postal history pioneered by robson is a study of postal services one of the oldest means of communication which by the way is on the verge of becoming uh, history itself and look at the fifth one postal history covers uh, philatelic, uh, philatelic, uh, philatelic collections of postcards, stamps, envelopes, and other postal goods uh, used in the past. So between third and five, so third one looks like what? It's a book. It's a name of a book. It's a name of a concept. It's a name. So as I said, first sentence is usually what very broad, and it introduces what maybe a person, place, or a thing. So here it could be a book also, right? So it was pioneered by a person. And now fifth sentence what gives you some, some specific details about what that history 
is postal history. So it covers what? Some philatelic collections of postcards, stamps, envelopes, all that. And uh, next sentence can be what? Second one, right? Originally, it covers the study of postal administration. And of course, I always keep, you know, keep telling people that once you get the first sentence, you have to read the full first sentence for its meaning, for its tone, for its how it ends with. So this is very, very important. And usually, of course, uh, the second sentence in a paragraph is usually uh, the one which gives specific details about the first sentence or the one which is opposite to the first sentence or maybe it explains the first sentence also. So you can always you know, think of you know, which one gives you a better relationship in terms of specific or in terms of opposition, in terms of uh, what explanation and all that. So, but once you get the first sentence, you have to read every sentence fully uh, for the sake of what? Uh, understanding whether a sentence has got any kind of an indicator because that helps you actually to understand its prospective position in a paragraph. All right, so now three, five, and two, what? It's like an extension, right? So if you go to our, uh, let's say, uh, let's say here it is, relationship, process indicator, sequence indicator, specific indicators, apportion. Maybe you can also say uh, explanation indicators also, extension indicators or explanation indicator because in our Rosebud technique actually, uh, Rosebud or Rosegat. So E stands for explanation, extension or elaboration also, right? So a sentence which extends maybe, so three, five and then two. Two is simply what? Adding something to the previous sentence. It is fifth sentence says what? Third and fifth. Fifth is what our second sentence. So after three and five, second has to come, right? Because additionally, it covers the study of postal administration, work process flow, prices, sorry, policies, rates of the production, services, political influences, working and designing, transportation, other logistics. So whenever you get any sentence, read that sentence for meaning, read that sentence for tone, read that sentence for how it ends with. So if you look at this sentence ends with what? Transportation and other logistics. So the next sentence, maybe it could be extending the end of the previous also right so now it has to be one as a fourth sentence regarding transportation for instance the challenge is not to understand the general day-to-day -day postal rates but the challenges on trials that start when postal services have to reach the military posted in the outskirts in the mountains I mean uh, patches of deserts or something like that right so fourth sentence goes opposite with the first sentence so definitely they have to come together one after the other so finally the, the sequence is what three five and then um, let's say two and then one and then four so you have to keep checking like this actually once you get the first sentence once you see so uh, does it see does it show any relationship with the first sentence do i have any time let's say reference in uh, maybe hint indicators in this showing relationship with the previous sentence so you have to keep checking with the first once you get the first sentence right check every sentence with the first sentence the rest of the four sentences put it against the first sentence do i see uh, any uh, indicator indicating this sentence's relationship with the previous sentence maybe that relationship could be specific uh, indicators, time indicators, reference indicators, opposition indicators, sequence indicators. So do I have any indicator in this sentence indicating its relation with the previous sentence so that I can think of it as a first sentence, a second sentence. Now, look at on the left hand side. So from here, maybe you can think of. Look at it, please. First, you do it by yourself based on the technique that I told you. First, what do you do? Bring uh, first eliminate four sentences that you think that they cannot come as a first sentence. Eliminate four sentences that you feel those are independent or the meaning of the sentence is not independent or the sentence uh, maybe has got some uh, dependent indicators uh, hence they cannot be thought of as uh, a first sentence. So first maybe let's see. Can we think of clearly a number of factors have contributed to its remarkable appearance? So it is what? A dependent word. So it cannot come. The result is a unique story of land collisions. Can you think of it as a first sentence? No way. Because result is whenever you want to say something should have happened. So uh, this sentence meaning is not independent. So a sentence looks independent, but the meaning also has to be independent. So the first sentence in a paragraph, the meaning of the sentence has to be independent. The words also need to be independent. Only then we will consider such sentences at first. See now, look at that. Experts have, who have analyzed the rock formations say that, that it goes back nearly 2 billion years. So here we have time period actually, time indicator. 
so that also helps us that is called uh, a reference uh, sorry um, relationship indicator actually it's a clue so that is important even once but this sentence cannot come as a first because it goes back what goes back so it is called what a, a, maybe a dependent word hence c cannot come as a first and look at e then the geological processes that have taken place since then so the then also cannot come as a first because then is called a dependent word hence that sentence cannot be treated as a first sentence at all so in all likelihood it has to be then what d for ali so look at that d anyone who has ever visited the grand canyon will agree that it is one of the most incredible sites in the world maybe if you look at that maybe it you might wa wonder this is also a dependent word but that is that dependent word is justified within that sentence because it is referring to what grand canyon so when that dependent word refers to within the same sentence and when it is justified we can still consider it a first sentence so in all likelihood what do you do now we will pull this onto the right hand side so once you get a sentence onto the right hand side what do you do now every sentence you keep checking now right do i see any um, maybe out of four sentences which sentence shows relationship with the previous sentence right so what do you do now you bring this up and keep checking do i have any anything in this sentence maybe do i have any word within sentence which is referring to what something maybe in the previous industry that so that you'll understand the result is a unique story of land collisions and erosions and of rising and falling water levels what happened here it simply says what it is the most incredible sites that's it so there is nothing solid happening in our first sentence uh, to say what the result is a unique story so i would suggest you pull this onto the left hand and keep checking like this so e has what the geological processes that have taken place since then or uh, then but do we have then then is a time indicator do you have any time here so do you see any relationship here since then then refers to what here nothing so let us not even consider that one so if b for bangalore cannot come e cannot come then i think between a and c which one can share a better relationship with the first one now you can see like this So clearly, a number of factors have contributed to its remarkable appearance. So here, what do you do? Remarkable appearance refers to what? I told you, once you get the first sentence, read for meaning, read for tone, read for how it ends with. And it ends with what? Incredible sites also. It is one of the incredible sites. And many factors have contributed to its remarkable appearance. Remarkable appearance is throwing reference to what? Incredible site. So that's how it establishes a link with the previous sentence. Right? And many factors have contributed. So can you... Now... Once you get the first sentence, I told you any sentence, either it could be one or two, then what do you do? Read for meaning, read for tone, read for how it ends with. So now we know that E has got a time indicator, but we don't have any time indicator. So this sentence cannot be treated as a third sentence. So it has to be between these two now. So B is again too, uh, B as a third sentence is too early for us because the result is what is happening to say that, you know, the result is. So I think, you know, this can be a better treatment. Right. Experts who have analyzed the rock formation say that historically it goes back nearly 2 billion years. So now we here we see what 2 billion uh, years. Right. That's a time indicator. Then immediately what do we do? We have a time indicator. I think, you know, since then makes a uh, you know, reference to what? So this one will refer to what? The previous sentence. So let us pray. All right. And at the end, you can always put it right so all right so maybe you can try to do a few but of course in the in the second video related to reorder you i will give you some exercises so so that uh, you know i will give you exercise in the second video then you can keep doing and uh, first of course you would better do it then i will keep explaining that one all right and that you will see it in the second video please